take this badge from me I can't use it anymore It's getting dark, too dark to see Welcome to Chase Oaks. We are so glad that you're here this weekend, and uh, there's a lot more people here than it was the last time that I spoke, so it's good. It's good to see some people back in the building. 
And uh, thank you for joining us this week. We're talking about one minute after you die. Welcome to church, right? Um, if it's your first time, you're like, you guys talk, are talking about death. Like, what a great weekend to show up. And, and the reality is... Um, Death is a part of life, and, and, and for a lot of us, we don't always want to face that, um, but that is the hope that we all have in Christ, is that death has lost its sting, so we actually can talk about that confidently, knowing what's going to happen for us one minute after we die. In this series, we've been taking questions uh, about heaven, and you guys have asked some really, really, really great questions. I put together just a couple of them that I thought were very interesting. The first one was, will it be hard to get tea times in heaven for all of our golfers here? That was what was most important to them, right? Isn't that just great? The second one that I thought was great was, will there be dinosaurs? All my Jurassic Park lovers, we think that's just fantastic. And then probably the most important question is, will there be Chick-fil-A? And uh, I can guarantee you, Enclosed on Sunday, but not in heaven, right? So, um, and, and then uh, the one that came up the most was, well, what happens to our loved ones, and, and will will we see them again? Um, let me tell you, uh, one of the one of the questions that was submitted, it wasn't even a question; it was one word, Marcia. That's what they wrote. The question was inferred. Somebody lost Marcia. And they're going, man, it's, when will I ever see them again? And then what, what, what will heaven truly be like? And will we be re- reunited with the, f- the friends and family members and colleagues that we've lost through, throughout the years? For some people, it was their children. For some people, it was their grandparents, you know, and, and, and that, that was what was so heartfelt about really looking at, at this series and really looking at, at those questions. Uh, I don't know when was the first time that you really learned about this concept of heaven. When was the first time, like, someone introduced to you um, the idea of heaven? For me, it was 1989, and there was this movie that came out, All Dogs Go to Heaven. And I went, okay, this is interesting, okay. And, and so I kind of had this visual of these dogs with a halo, and, and you know, they kind of go back and forth, and this dog gets a second chance, and, and, and that, was, that was the first time I had learned about heaven. The second time I learned about heaven was at a funeral. And uh, I said, man, this guy, he's in this casket. And, and my mom said, well, he's going to a better place. He's going to see the king in heaven. And I said, oh, that's cool. Then we started singing a song at the funeral. Soon and very soon we are going to see the king. I said, wait, 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 wait. The man in the casket's going to see the king. I don't know that I want to see the king right now. I'm 12, okay? Like, like he can go see the king. I'm good right where I'm at, Okay. Now, the third time um, that I really learned about heaven was actually in the year 1999 uh, when we all thought Jesus was going to come back in the year 2000. And we all started, you know, remember Y2K? And we started just buying stuff for no reason. And, and I was so convinced that Jesus was going to come back at the year 2000 that I didn't go to any New Year's parties on December 31st, 1999. I was convinced. I was so convinced that Jesus was coming back for me personally that I, I was so self-centered that I said, he's not just coming back at midnight. He's coming back at midnight Central Standard Time, okay? So when the ball dropped in New York, like at 11 o'clock my time, I'm like, those sinners in New York, that's their problem. Jesus will be back in an hour. And I remember sitting in my mother's bed with my Bible open. I went, when Jesus comes back, I want him to find me in Jeremiah. You know what I mean? And so I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, this is going to be a great scene. I'm like, I don't know what you're going to be doing, but I know what I'm going to be doing when the trumpet sounds and I meet him in the air. And then something crazy happened. 1201. And I thought, I'm probably in line. Okay, but it's going to come. And then 1202, and then 1203. And before you know it, here we are in 2021. I'm like, okay, here we are. Like, this, that, that, that really didn't happen. And we all can kind of get this interesting idea of, of what heaven is going to be like. If you think about a modern-day TV show um, called The Good Place, Eleanor, uh, she dies. She gets hit by a, a, a large pile of shopping carts, and she finds herself in what the show is called The Good Place. And Eleanor this is how, how heaven, the good place, is described to her. It's a point system. 
Your good deeds get you points, and your, your bad mistakes get you points. And if your good deeds outweigh your bad mistakes, well, then all of a sudden you can go to the good place. But if your mistakes and your failures and your setbacks, if all of that outweighs your good deeds, well, you go to the bad place. And so there's this whole concept of going, well, no, that's not how it works. But if we're honest, don't a lot of us live that way? I mean, don't a lot of us think about it like, like if, we're, if, if we've had a good week, we're like, oh, yeah, I feel pretty good. Like, I feel like me and God are, are, like, are really good right now. And but, but when all of a sudden you find yourself not having a good week, you're like, man, I must have done something. And it's very easy to forget the work of Christ in our lives as it pertains to what our lives are going to look like one minute after we die. Whenever I am uh, preparing a message, I'm going to give you a little bit of behind the scenes. Um, I like to do a, a word search uh, for whatever that topic it is that, that I'm studying. I also pray, so you should know that. That's, that's key. Um, so what I did uh, for this message is I just typed in the word heaven um, on Bible Gateway, and it, it'll pop up a, a bunch of stuff. And here's the, the interesting thing when we begin to have a conversation about heaven. Um, the first thing that pops up um, is actually not the word heaven. It's actually the word heavens, plural, plural. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so, again, you start to think about, okay, well, how many times do we see the word heavens? A hundred and 90 times. And here are the heavens and the earth. Now, when most of us talk about heaven, what do we do? We point up. Here's the problem. If I'm pointing up where I'm at right now, someone else around the world that's also pointing up is pointing down. down. And guess what? We're rotating right now. So technically we're like this. <laughs> at all times. Could it be that the heavens aren't up. Could it be that the heavens are all around us? Isn't it amazing what happens when we begin to just look at just one word? We start to see a whole new picture than perhaps what we were even just taught as kids because most of us are looking up. But imagine if we started thinking of God like this. All around us. Um, the, the word heaven, we see 432 times in Scripture and 276 times in the New Testament. Paul referred to it about 33 times in his letters to the church. It's mentioned 45 times in the book of Revelation. If you really want to really get a great picture of what heaven will be like, um, Revelation is a great place to start. I want to look at just a little bit. We don't have, I mean, we literally could talk about heaven for a, a whole year. I um, mean, anything that I say that's wrong, Jeff will fix next week. Okay, that's why we're doing two weeks on this. Okay, so don't worry about it. All right. So, so Revelation 21, uh, starting in verse one, it says, and this is John who has been given a vision of heaven. He says this, then I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and first earth had passed away. So right away, we know that this, what we're doing right now, will eventually be new, okay? So the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from heaven from God, prepared as a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, now the dwelling of God is with men and he will live with them. They will be his people, and God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down. For these words are trustworthy and true. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. So he took me in the spirit to a great high mountain, and he showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Now, here's the interesting part. The angel who talked to me held in his hand a gold 
measuring stick to measure the city. I don't know how you measure stuff in your house, but it wasn't this, okay? It wasn't on this level. I guarantee you that, okay? So he's got this measuring stick, and he pulls it out to measure the city, its gates, and its walls. And when he measured it, he found it was a square as wide as it was long. In fact, its length and width and height were each 1,400 miles, okay? 1,400 miles, then he measured the walls and found it to be 216 feet thick. The wall was made of jasper, and the city was pure gold, as clear as glass. Now, I want you to just think about this for a minute. Um, How many miles do you think is outer space from where we are right now? Just a guess. What do you think? 10? 10 miles in the air? 20? 30? Give me some guesses. What you got? What'd you say? 100. 100. 62 miles. 62 miles in the air is outer space. This city is 1,400 miles tall. We're going to need elevators, y'all. I promise you that. Guarantee it. Or jetpacks to fly. Maybe wings. Nevertheless, there is, this is a brand new space that clearly won't fit where we are right now, okay? That there, there's, there's just no way for that to happen. And what we have to understand about heaven, a lot of people are going, man, what in the world? How, what is heaven going to be like? Heaven is a remade earth as it was originally intended to be. So when you begin to look at what you're, if you really want to know what heaven's going to look like, it's a better version of what you got right now. And for, for a lot of us, we're going, man, well, well, what does that look like? It, well, one, it means new relationships without the pain, tears, no more saying goodbye to our loved ones too soon. The, the thing that I'm very much looking forward to on this new heaven and new earth, the new bodies, oh my God, don't we all need it? I mean, the older we get, the more we're like, I, I need this new body right now, okay? A new, new knees would be great. Even if I could just get new knees, I would be good with just that, okay? But, but it, it is a newness, and, and what we have to understand is, is life now matters, and we want to make the best of what we have now for what is to come. The reality is, is every single one of us had nothing to do with how we got here. None of us. I was born in 1986, and I don't know when I'm going to die. No clue. And all I have is this dash. That's what I have. I have this dash. And one minute after I die, I get to be with the Lord. Now... One minute after I die and I say I'm going to be with the Lord, I don't know if I'm going to be in line. I don't know if I'm going to be in Abraham's bosom. I don't know if I'm playing. I'm probably going to be playing basketball, but I don't know if that's going to be inside the gate or outside the gate. I'm not sure yet, okay? But I do know I can't control that right now. I can't control the dash because every single one of us will get a tombstone. And every single person in our life will talk about what we did with our dash this weekend when we begin to talk about heaven at some point, and my friend said that, said that to me this weekend as we were having a conversation this week about heaven. He goes, I hear these messages about heaven. And I'm just going, yeah, that sounds great then. But what about, what does that have to do with me now? I mean, the question I want you to answer this weekend is, what are you doing with your dash? What are you doing with your dash? What are you doing now to prepare for then, because they're, 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 they're connected. We will have jobs, ladies and gentlemen. Like, this, this, don't think, oh, yeah, I'm just going to retire. That's what, that's what heaven is. No, we're, 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 it's not one long, boring church service. Like, man, we're just going to be doing hymns for, for 100 years. Like, no, it's life as it was originally meant to be. Adam messed something up. And we see that in Romans chapter 5. It says, therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, and in this way death came to all people because all sinned. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who is a pattern of the one to come. 
For if by the trespass of the one man death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and the gift of righteousness reign in life through one man, Jesus Christ? In other words, what the Apostle Paul was telling the church of Rome is that what Adam did created a domino effect that jacked up a lot of things for you and me. It jacked up our planet. It jacked up our relationships. It jacked up our destiny to some degree. But that's not, that's not where the story ends. What, what the Apostle Paul is going, he goes, but there's now a second domino effect. Because of what Jesus has done for us, it has created a brand new domino effect. So now we get to operate and rule and reign with Jesus. When you see Jesus talk about heaven, what you see him use is he uses this phrase about 33 times in the New Testament. He talks about the kingdom of heaven. And when he talks about the kingdom of heaven, he's talking about the rule and reign of of heaven, the rule and reign of God. What you, you may have seen this verse before in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. It says, from that time on, Jesus began to preach, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. So now Jesus is giving us this idea that the kingdom of heaven, the rule and reign of God is coming towards us. There is something that is coming for us. Most of us have this idea of, I can't wait to go to heaven. When the whole purpose of why we're on the planet, the whole purpose of why we were created was for heaven to come down. So what do we get to do with our dash? We get to be the type of people that pray, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. I love what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 5. He says, for truly I tell you, until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Therefore, anyone who sets aside one of the least of these commandments and teaches others accordingly will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. That's really tough news. I mean, if you're... If you're a Jesus follower and you're, 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 you're hearing this message live, you're going, well, how is my righteousness going to, how, how is that going to happen? If you are studying the kingdom of heaven through the words of Jesus, you're going to hear some things that are very unsettling. At one point, you know what Jesus says to his followers? Be perfect. Yeah, be perfect. As my Father in heaven is Perfect. Anybody done that lately? Just curious. Okay, good. Right. Like, you might think that you're a good Christian, and you might be, but you're not a perfect one. That's for sure. And so the Jesus standard for entering into the kingdom of heaven is unattainable by anybody in the building. And it sounds like bad news at first on the surface. But the point of the message is Jesus is going, you're going to need somebody else's righteousness to be a part of what I'm doing on earth as it is in heaven. How about I volunteer? Thank God for Jesus to be the type of person that would say, you know what? For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only son, me, to die for your sins so that none should perish, so that we all could experience life as it was originally meant to be. Thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. This is how Jesus taught us to pray. It's not just, we're not just 
biding time. We're not just like, well, we're just going to wait till we get to go to heaven. No, we're, we should spend every waking moment that we have trying to bring heaven on earth. I want you to bring heaven to earth. This is, this is what I think Jesus wants from us. What does it look like to bring heaven to earth? It sounds uh, very uh, vast. It sounds very uh, theoretical. How, how, what, what does it look like practically? Whenever you begin to study, and, and that's the takeaway from this weekend, I want you to study at least one, the kingdom of heaven is like parable from Jesus. Because what he's starting to do is he's going, hey, uh, I know that God can be a little bit elusive for some people, and I know that how this kingdom works, it's kind of upside down. The first should be last, the last should be first. And so we're trying to understand what are the rules going to be for people that operate in the kingdom of heaven. And so I'm going to give you four, four basic things that you can do right now that I believe helps us bring heaven to earth. Number one, help the hurting. If you see somebody that is hurting, help. Don't ignore. Don't be the type of person that simply says, well, it, it, it's, it's just about me. No, no, no. As a Jesus follower, as a kingdom of heaven type of person, I'm actually looking for opportunities to help someone else. Can someone help this baby? Yes, we want to help you. Yes, this is great. Okay, like, like what can we do for somebody else? You really want to know how to bring heaven to earth? Forgive the offensive. Forgive the offensive. How in the world is this bringing heaven to earth? It's deciding to be a person that says, hey, guess what? Somebody let me off the hook for something that I did not deserve to be forgiven for. So I'm going to extend a little bit of heaven to somebody else that I don't think deserves it. Uh, you and I have adopted a phrase over the last few years. It's, it's, it goes like this. You get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. We use this phrase whenever uh, we get a deal, you know, a Groupon. We feel great that we got the deal until we got the deal. And then we realize, oh, we got what we paid for. You got a deal on that hotel. You're like, man, I got a great deal on this hotel. Like, oh, this is great. Then you get to the hotel. You're like, oh, okay. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. We we got what we paid for. Uh, you got that friend who's a mechanic who told you he could fix your car? Yeah, he can't. Oh, but, but, but you got you got what you paid for because you were like, oh, I don't want to pay thousands of dollars to the dealership. Okay, he's going to hook me up and you get what you pay for. And that's what a lot of us believe in the society we live in today is that we get what we pay for. Let me tell you what heaven's like. Let me tell you how it works in the kingdom of heaven. We don't get what we pay for. We get what Jesus paid for. That's the beauty of the kingdom. And so in light of the fact that we get what Jesus paid for, we should be people that do this super well because <laughs> we got what somebody else paid for. Are you kidding me? You're going to hold on to bitterness for 10 years when you didn't get what you paid for? Are you kidding me? No, it's, I want to bring heaven to earth. Let it go. And I want to extend heaven to, to, to my friends, to my colleagues, to my family members. Because sometimes our dash is too short to hold on to bitterness for no reason. The third thing I think we can do to bring heaven to earth Let's go the extra mile. Jesus talks about this. He's like, hey, I want you to go the extra mile. If somebody asked you to go one, I want you to go two. What he was referring to is that a Roman soldier could ask a Hebrew boy to carry his gear and carry his military weapons at least one mile. And it was a walk of shame. Jesus is going, yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't make that a walk of shame. Make that a walk of love. To which a Roman soldier would be confused when a Hebrew boy is like, hey, let's go another mile. What? No, 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 no. This is supposed to be a walk of shame. He goes, well, it was supposed to be, but <laughs> hey, man, I'm an extension of heaven. I don't know what to tell you. Where are we going? They don't even know what to do with that. So we're called to be different in this life. And I think that you and I have an opportunity to be extensions of heaven. And the last thing that I think that we can do to bring heaven to earth 
is to share. Share your faith. Share your faith. And it's going to pop up. I think if I keep saying it by faith, I think it's going to pop up on the screen. So share your faith. There it is. You see? I think we've mastered the art of sharing our opinion. We're good at that, right? We can pull out our phones right now and share our opinion. We might even be quick to share our perspective, but as kingdom of heaven type of people, I think we should be people that are quick to share our faith. Because I, I, I don't know about you, but I do know about me is that I've got people in my life who are down, who are hurting, who are looking for hope, that are looking for answers. And my opinion won't move them from where they are to where God wants them to be. But my faith can. Can you imagine if we were people that decided to, be, to make decisions that says, you know what, whenever, I'm have, whenever I have an opportunity to share my faith, man, I'm going to tell somebody. When I'm on Facebook, man, I got an option. My opinion? Well, what about my faith? Because here's what I know. You got a friend. You got a loved one. You got a colleague. You got a classmate. That needs some faith. They could use a little bit of yours because they don't, they don't have any. And, and can I tell you something? I know some people that have just been through some really, really tough things. And they used to have faith and they lost it. They lost it. And call me crazy. I think they need you. Call me crazy. I think they need me. That in a moment that we could be people that says, Lord, thy kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. May your kingdom come. May I be a part of that now because I'm going to be a part of it for a very, very long time. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And I promise you what I know for sure about myself is it will not be the first time that I've made that confession then. I remember... Um, I heard this guy in the 90s talking about him uh, going to heaven, that he had a vision of that he went to heaven for about four and a half hours. And, uh, you know, I watched this whole video on the deal. Anytime somebody tells you um, that they went to heaven, obviously there's a little bit of skepticism that goes into that, you know. Um, and, and even talking about heaven, there is a, a reverence that I have in the fact that um, as much as you can study heaven, you can only study it to a degree without going there. You, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, like, like my buddy went to Hawaii uh, a couple of weeks ago, and I said, how was it? He said it was great. He goes, but the one thing that I didn't know was, was about the stray cats and the stray chickens. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, if you go to Hawaii, and if you go to Walmart in Hawaii, you'll just see a bunch of chickens buck, 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 just walking around. I'm like, really? He's like, yeah, stray cat, cats everywhere. I'm like, nobody puts that in the picture. He's like, yeah, because you've never been. And so it's funny because people are like, man, tell me about heaven. I'm like, I ain't never been there. I, I mean, I, I can read just like you, you know? But so, so there's a reverence. I mean, I, 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 I have the temptation to appear smarter than I really am, but I ain't never been there. Then neither have you. So we're in this thing together, okay? Like I said, Jeff's coming next week. He's going to crush it. All right, so. Um, <laughs> but I, 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 was, I, was, I was watching this guy talk about heaven, and I, I had so much skepticism, and, and, and there were things where you were going, man, that, that sounds... Some of that, that sounds biblical. Some of them, like, oh, I don't know. And then I was going on this back and forth thing with it. And, and then he finished. And, you know, he's still been in ministry for 30 years. So, you know, I don't think he's a crackpot or anything like that. And so you're just, but I, I could just tell you, I could just tell you where, where I landed after hearing him talk. I said, I don't know if he's lying. I don't know if he's just incredibly uh, creative. I don't know if he just has an amazing imagination. Or maybe it's real. But it doesn't matter. Because one minute after I die, I want to be with Jesus. And one minute after I die, I want to experience 
heaven. And I thank God that the standard for getting in is perfection. Which, what that means for you and for me is we all need a savior. And I'm so grateful that Jesus volunteered because otherwise what would we do? One minute af after we die, my hope and prayer is that you would put your dash in the hands of Jesus. He's all we got. As good as any of us can be, it's filthy rags on our best day. And today, if, if you find yourself in a position where you say, you know what, I, I, I want to surrender my life to Jesus. I, one minute after I die, I, I, I want to I be with him. I, I, I want you to text the word yes. Text the word yes to, to the number 58578. Text the word yes to the number 58578. And uh, some people are going to follow up with you about it the best decision that you've ever made in your life. What's heaven going to be like? From what I read, very tall, 1,400 miles. Very, very, very tall. Yep, we, 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 we've got that. Some gold, some jasper. No more pain, no more tears. Uh, a lot of basketball, that's what I read. And um, <laughs> not sure about golf. Pretty sure Chick-fil-A is going to be there. And, you know, we're... But we've not been, but we will, I believe we're going to get that opportunity. And I think the most important thing about heaven is the fact that we get to have communion with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'll be honest, I don't really care if there's basketball. It's just a game. I don't care if there's golf or Chick-fil-A <laughs> or my favorite food or pizza I just want to be wherever Jesus is. Because somebody allowed me not to get what I paid for. And I can't wait to see him face to face and worship him and thank him for standing in the gap, making sure that I don't get what I actually deserve. And I think that's the most important thing that we can think about when we think about heaven. God, I thank you so much for this amazing church. God, I pray that every single person would have a relationship with you under the sound of my voice. One minute after we die, God, I pray that we would see you face to face. That's our hope. That's, our, that's what we believe. That's what we're trusting in. That's what we're banking on. And, and God, I, I pray that with the vapor of a life that you have given us. I pray that we would spend our lives trying to bring heaven to earth. You have gone to great lengths to connect us with you. You've gone to great lengths to give us life as it was originally intended to be. That's what we have to look forward to. And I pray, God, that we would spend our dash being just like you, making sure each and every person around us experiences the kingdom of heaven. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said, amen. You can go ahead and stand to your feet. We're going to take a few moments just to respond to today's message, a song about bringing heaven to earth. I pray that, that in these next few moments, man, that the touch of heaven would be on your life and that we would be people that extend it to other people around us. Join us as we sing. Let's sing. We've only scratched the surface And only had just one glimpse We've tasted of your glory there's so much more And we're standing on a rise Where earth collides with heaven And you're longing for your children To 
cry out for more and we cry out for more mm -hmm. sing one more song 
And this song uh, for me is one that is the whole reason we come together, the whole reason that we gather and sing praise to him and give glory to God. And it talks about the grace that rewrote our story. And now we get to be an extension of that grace here on earth. So as we think about what that means for me and you, let's continue to sing. Fall like lightning, yeah. And I saw darkness run for cover, hey. But the miracle that I just can't get over is my name is registered in heaven. Sing, I believe, yeah. I believe in signs and wonders, hey. And I have a resurrection power. We're so glad you're here. And hey, we'd love to pray for you. Um, so if you want prayer from us, um, we'll be in touch with you if you text PRAY to 58578. Otherwise, we will see you all next week.